Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our St. Francis de Sales parishioners and friends around Morgantown and my family members and friends around the state of West Virginia. Today we celebrate Palm Sunday of the Lord's Passion. Again, like last week, I thank Robert Phipps and Sharon Schatzer, who were very busy this week in enhancing the production of technology. So please let us know if everything uh, is uh, right. Uh, as you know, I'm out of my league with all of these things, but I appreciate the hard work of Robert and Sharon. Robert is here with us at a healthy prescribed distance, of course, and will make the responses during the mass. And so I encourage you to make those responses with him. Again, today is Palm Sunday of the Lord's Passion. And so there is a blessing of palms that will take place at the beginning of this liturgy. Uh, the blessing uh, of palms uh, will be, of course, extended for uh, all of our palms, although you'll see only a small amount of them gathered here. We have the rest in refrigeration and uh, until our period of containment passes, and then, of course, those palms, those blessed palms, will be able to be distributed. I'm very happy to share with all of you that uh, this week we were able to send out worship aids uh, for the various movements of Holy Week for our parishioners by email and then by website. Again, for the movements of today, Palm Sunday, and then the Paschal Triduum as well. And we thought these would be helpful uh, for you in drawing your families together in celebrating these sacred moments. Our resources uh, were not created here uh, at the parish, but the re resources were forwarded us by the diocese. And Sharon and I decorated them for our parishioners with the appropriate art so that you might uh, be able to enter all the more into the sacred movements of these saving events that we celebrate in Holy Week. One particular announcement regarding Holy Thursday, uh, you'll notice in the worship aid, there is an invitation for families to participate in the washing of the feet. And ideally, that is for the head of households to do as a sign of service. But upon thinking about it, I wanted to put a shout out there for our confirmation students. That might be a very real sign of service for our confirmation students as well, to wash the feet of their family members as they prepare for the sacrament of confirmation. A reminder to all that our Holy Thursday Mass of the Lord's Supper and Good Friday service of the celebration of the Lord's Passion will be live streamed both at 7 p.m. Uh, on those respective days of Holy Thursday and Good Friday. Just a couple of housekeeping details. Yesterday was the 95th birthday of Antoinette for Lini of our parish, one of our more venerable members of the parish at 95. Uh, so we wish her well, and I'm very mindful that she would have been in the church today dressed in red, red shoes, complete uh, red outfit. Bon compleanno, Antonietta. Finally, thank you so much to all who have sent in their envelopes and made online donations for us. We so appreciate it. Like the rest of our country and like many of your households, our parish has taken a hit in these days of containment. And so your generosity uh, means a great deal to all of us. Before our liturgy begins, I do ask for your prayers for all those who are working on the front lines of this battle against COVID-19. I ask too that you remember in prayer all those suffering from the illness and their loved ones as well. And for those who have died in our country and around the globe as a result 
of the COVID-19 pandemic. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Dear sisters and brothers, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today, we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say, of his Passion and Resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. We ask the Lord's blessing upon these palms that will be distributed at a later time following this period of containment. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing so that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem with him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus and his disciples drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethphage of the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find an ass tethered and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them here to me. And if anyone should say anything to you, reply, The master has need of them. Then he will send them at once. This happened so that what had been spoken through the prophet might be fulfilled. Say to daughter Zion, Behold, your king comes to you, meek and riding on an ass, and on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had ordered them. They brought the ass and the colt and laid their cloaks over them, and he sat upon them. The very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and strewed them on the road. The crowds preceding him and those following kept saying, kept crying out and saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was shaken and asked, Who is this? And the crowds replied, This is Jesus, the prophet, from Nazareth in Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today, as we mark the opening of Great Week here in Morgantown and around the globe, the Church of the West celebrates the triumphal entry of Jesus his messianic entry into Jerusalem by passing through the Messiah's gate. Of course, this day is marked uh, in our minds and hearts with a fond memory of a procession that has been so much part of our reality down through the ages and then extended even more so in 1955 by Pope Pius XII, inviting the entire congregation to join in a procession. And while that procession is not possible 
today because of uh, precautionary measures and in this time of containment, we are mindful of our spiritual journeys up to Jerusalem throughout this week. As the Lord entered the holy city, the children of the Hebrews proclaimed the resurrection of life. Waving their branches of palm, they cried out, Hosanna in the highest. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue, that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? All who see me scoff at me. They mock me with parted lips. They wag their heads. He relied on the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, if he loves him. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Indeed, many dogs surround me. A pack of evildoers closes in upon me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? They divide my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. But you, O Lord, be not far from me. O my help, hasten to aid me. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? I will proclaim your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You will hear the Lord, praise him. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, give glory to him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth,
and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty silver pieces, and from that time on, he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time draws near. In your house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him, one after another, Surely it is not I, Lord. He said in reply, he who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes, as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for him that that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, you have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread and said the blessing, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, from now on, I shall not drink this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new with you in the kingdom of my Father. Then after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, This night all of you will have your faith in me shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him in reply, Though all may have their faith in you shaken, mine will never be. Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, This very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples spoke likewise. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to feel sorrow and distress. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and keep watch with me. He advanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. When he returned, to his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, So you could not keep watch with me for one hour. Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, 
but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again, My father, if it is not possible that this cup pass without my drinking it, your will be done. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open. He left them and withdrew again and prayed a third time, saying the same thing again. Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand when the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Look, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests and the elders of the people. His betrayer had arranged a sign with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him. Immediately, he went over to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi, and he kissed him. Jesus answered him, Friend, do what you have come for. Then stepping forward, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of those who accompanied Jesus put his hand to the sword, drew it, and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its sheath, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot call upon my Father, and he will not provide me at this moment with more than twelve legions of angels? But then, how would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say that it must come to pass in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out as against the robber? with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I sat, teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me. But all this has come to pass, that the writings of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the high priest's courtyard, and going inside, he sat down with the servants to see the outcome. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward who stated, this man said, I can destroy the temple of God and within three days rebuild it. The high priest rose and addressed him. Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But Jesus, was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I order you to tell us under oath before the living God whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him in reply, You have said so, but I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the priest the high priest tore his robes and said, He has blasphemed. What further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? They said in reply, He deserves to die. Then they spat in his face and struck him, while some slapped him, saying, Prophesy for us, Christ. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside the courtyard. One of the maids came over to him and said, You too were with Jesus, the Galilean. But he denied it 
in front of everyone, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. As he went out to the gate, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This man was with Jesus the Nazarene. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. A little later, the bystanders came over and said to Peter, Surely you are one of them. Even your speech gives you away. At that he began to curse and to swear, I do not know the man. And immediately the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had spoken, Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. When it was morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that Jesus had been condemned, deeply regretted what he had done. He returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? Look to it yourself. Flinging the money into the temple, he departed and went off and hanged himself. The chief priests gathered up the money but said, It is not lawful to deposit this into the temple treasury, for this is the price of blood. After consultation, they used it to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That is why that field even today is called the field of blood. Then was fulfilled what had been said through Jeremiah the prophet, and they took the 30 pieces of silver, the value of a man with a price on his head, a price set by some of the Israelites, and they paid it out for a potter's field, just as the Lord had commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor who questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, you say so. And when he was accused, by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished and at that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they assembled, Pilate said to them, Which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus, called the Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed him over. While he was still seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message have nothing to do with that righteous man. I suffered much in a dream today because of him. The chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in reply, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus? called Christ. They all said, let him be crucified. But he said, why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead, he took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to it yourselves. And the whole people said in reply, His blood be upon us and upon our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. But after he had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. 
Then the, then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about him. Weaving a crown out of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. And when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And they placed over his head the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself if you are the Son of God and come down from that cross. Likewise, the chief priests and the scribes and the elders mocked him and said, he saved others. He cannot save himself. So he is the king of Israel. Let him come down from that cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God, the revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon onward, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at, and at about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, This one is calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran to get a sponge. He soaked it in wine and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to save him. But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the men with him who were keeping watch over Jesus feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening, and they said, Truly, this was the Son of God. There were many women there, looking on from a distance, who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him. Among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there was a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was himself a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be handed over. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in a clean linen 
and laid it in his new tomb that had been hewn in the rock. Then he rolled a huge stone across the entrance of the tomb and departed. But Mary Magdalene and the other Mary remained there, sitting there, facing the tomb. The next day, one of the following, the day, the one following the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that this imposter, while still alive, said, After three days, I will be raised up. Give orders then that the grave be secured until the third day, lest his disciples come and steal him and say to the people, he has been raised from the dead. This last imposture would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, the guard is yours. Go secure it as best you can. So they went and secured the tomb by fixing a seal on the stone and setting the guard. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As I normally share with you, on Palm Sunday, the directives of the church at this point are a brief homily may be given. And the reason for that is obvious. Not so much because the gospel narrative was so lengthy, but rather the church invites us all to focus on that which we just heard, but not as bystanders, rather as participants, partakers in the Lord's own glorious passion, death, and resurrection. Those steps that all of us as disciples of the Lord Jesus, will trace throughout the movement of this Holy Week. It's certainly true that down through the ages, the Church has marked the beginning of Holy Week with Palm Sunday of the Lord's Passion. And in the minds and hearts of so many of us, this represents a high point. But again, we are to be mindful of the fact this is merely the beginning of these great scenes of our salvation. They continue to unravel throughout the week with his supper, his last supper with the disciples on Holy Thursday evening, that which we commemorate with uh, the Mass of the Lord's Supper. On Good Friday, the celebration of his Passion, we all go to Golgotha. On Holy Saturday, the church waits by the empty tomb with the women. And Easter Sunday, in the darkness of the light of the night, we announce our light has come and proclaim the glorious resurrection of the Lord Jesus. So even though we are at the beginning of this week, we keep our eyes firmly fixed on the end of this week, and we trace our steps and mark them firmly in each of our hearts. As I alluded in my Palm Sunday reflection, available to our parishioners and online, all of us are very much aware of marking beginnings, this year especially. We even mark the days of our national shutdown. We mark in each of our hearts that hard reality of containment. But as Holy Week reminds us, even in the midst of suffering, we are to keep our eyes and hearts firmly fixed on the end of this week and the power of the Lord's resurrection, the healing properties that that means for you and for me, <coughs> indeed for all of us around the globe. Again, this year, perhaps it is easier than most years in the past for us to relate to the suffering of Jesus, the suffering servant identified, prophesied in that first reading and in Psalm 22, 
And as St. Paul speaks so eloquently in that second reading of Jesus humbling himself, all of us know what that means to partake in that humbling as we stand in this great period of unknowing and uncertainty. But with Jesus, the suffering servant, the one who knows us best, who knows our humanity, who feels compassion for us in our misery at this time. He feels great kindness and mercy towards all of us. And so let us turn to him and continue to ask him to show us the way through this way of suffering so that we might come out on the other side gloriously mindful of his power, his love, and his mercy. St. Matthew's Gospel account of the Passion narrative that we just heard is very beautiful in reminding us of words that the children of the Hebrews stated, all of the crowds, words said in anger and in disgust, words that were meant as derogatory now, those words are for us and our children a blessing. Let his blood be upon us and upon our children. As we continue to move throughout this week, let's be mindful that we are indeed marked by the safety, by the mercy, by the kindness of the blood of Jesus Christ and our salvation is found therein. As a body of believers, members of the baptized, members of the church, scattered in our own homes, let's together, with one voice and one heart, profess our creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In confidence, then, we raise our prayers and petitions before the community of the church scattered in each of its representations, the, ecclesia, the domestic church around our city of Morgantown. For the Church of the West, opening festivities of Great Week, that all our hearts be moved to repentance and compassion as we celebrate the death of the Lord's love and mercy Unraveled in the liturgical movements of the upcoming days, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders, those charged with the health and welfare of our citizens, first responders, and health care personnel, that their hard work and diligence in combating COVID-19 be successful in ridding our world of this pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own catechumens and candidates, and for all others around the globe, 
that they remain firm in their faithful resolve as their preparation for the Easter sacraments continues. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who carry the cross of the Lord's suffering in their own bodies, minds, or spirits, especially those afflicted with the coronavirus or any other illness, hardship, or agony experienced in these hard days of containment, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own parish family, our sisters and brothers around the diocese, our nation, and indeed our globe, who are inhibited from active participation at the altar in these festive days as a result of precautionary measures directed to reduce community spread, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the growth of faith, hope, and charity in each of our households as we call our loved ones together for the annual celebration of these Paschal festivities this week. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our personal intentions held within our hearts and placed before the altar of the Lord's kindness. For these we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Finally, for those who have gone to their rest, especially for Mary Mulhall, the mother of our parishioner Jim Mulhall, for those around the globe who have died in relation to the COVID-19 pandemic, all our departed loved ones, and for Veronica Campbell, for whom this Holy Mass is celebrated, that they enjoy the vision of the new Jerusalem in the midst of the angels and saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, we ask you to hear our prayers and grant them in the name of Jesus, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, 
he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy, these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Francis de Sales, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Mark, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace, and please know that I extend to each and every one of you peace from my heart to yours. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say to, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Father, if this chalice cannot pass without my drinking it, your will be done. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection, 
you may lead us to where you call. Through Christ our Lord. Before the final blessing again, I want to thank you for participating with us in this live streamed liturgy from St. Francis de Sales Parish in Morgantown. A reminder that again, the movements of Holy Thursday evening and Holy Good Friday evening at 7 p.m., those events too will be uh, live streamed and I hope that you can participate Please use those worship aids that have been sent to all of our families in calling your loved ones together for prayer as we celebrate these sacred moments of the year. We all gain our strength and momentum from these sacred events. And although it is quite painful, I know, for all of you, for all of us, indeed, you don't know how much I miss seeing all of your faces here and the little pitter-patter of feet all around with our many young people, I know you are safe in your homes, and that's what counts in these days. So let's continue to love one another, to support one another, and to keep our minds and hearts firmly fixed on the dying and rising of Jesus, those events that we celebrate with great solemnity throughout this week. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, 